grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, every Tuesday, the staff at Trinity meet together. We begin our meeting with devotions, guided by the pastor who will be preaching the following weekend. And we use the scripture readings to guide our devotion together and our conversation. And so this week, I read John 12 to the staff, and I asked them the question, what is jumping out at you? Well, one of the staff members said, I feel like Jesus is being selfish here. Hmm. And then someone else added, it seems like what he says negates everything he says elsewhere. It seems like Jesus is setting his own life above those in need. They were, of course, talking about that final verse from our story for today. When Jesus says, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. So I'll be honest with you, friends. In past readings of John 12, I haven't batted an eye at this statement. Maybe I was unwilling to address it. But hearing one of my fellow staff members say, Jesus seems selfish, felt like a good reason to tackle this verse and stop ignoring it. You see, I've found that we often like to ignore those things that Jesus says that we don't like, those things that challenge us or make us uncomfortable. I've also found that we like to ignore the things that don't make a whole lot of sense, like this one here. But I think you know at this point in our ministry together, friends, that I like to take these verses head on. So it seems like we should probably talk about what Jesus is saying here. And I'm grateful for my fellow staff members who get us thinking when they bring these things up. So let's do this. Is Jesus being selfish? What does Jesus mean when he says, you always have the poor with you, but you don't always have me? Well, like many of the things that Jesus says and does, we've got a lot to dig into. First, friends, most scholars would say that Jesus is quoting the Old Testament here. Deuteronomy 15.11, to be exact. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and the needy neighbor in your land. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Bible, and the fifth book of the Torah, what our Jewish friends read, is a series of sermons given by Moses to the, to the Israelites before they arrive at their destination after leaving Egypt. You see, Deuteronomy outli- outlines some of the laws the Israelites are to follow from God. And this particular section from Deuteronomy deals with how the Israelites are to care for those in need, particularly how they are to forgive debts. Here, Jesus quotes something his listeners probably would have been familiar with because they were all Jews. It's likely that those listening to Jesus would have known what he was getting at, by saying, you always have the poor with you. In fact, they could probably finish that line from Deuteronomy in their minds. You will have the poor with you always, and they could finish the thought, so you should give to the poor. 
But what trips us up here, friends, isn't that first statement, right? It's that second one. But you do not always have me. What is Jesus saying here? Well, Jesus is talking about his death just before he makes this statement. When he says, she bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. Jesus is hinting at what is to come. His death and eventual resurrection and ascension. This is the time when the disciples and other followers will no longer have Jesus physically present. In fact, a lot of what Jesus is about to talk about in later chapters of John is preparing the disciples for this reality. How are they to live in Jesus' absence? So it could be that Jesus is also trying to teach that lesson here. I will not always be with you, Jesus says, but the poor will always be with you. It's like the poor, the oppressed, the less fortunate are a stand-in group for Jesus. As in, treat the poor, the oppressed, the less fortunate as you would treat me. When I'm not around, Jesus says, treat the poor as if it were me there. That's why Jesus says in other Gospels, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Right now, in our story for today, Mary is treating Jesus with love and service by anointing his feet. But when Jesus is no longer physically present, who needs this love and service? The poor, the oppressed, the less fortunate need this love and service. So based on that, friends, what does this mean for us? While this statement seemed confusing on the outset, now Jesus is quite clear. One of our most clear calls from Jesus is to address poverty. One in four stories from the Bible is about poverty. So when we see someone experiencing poverty, we are called to respond with generosity. We're called to address poverty by challenging oppressive systems that keep folks poor. Even Jesus' ragtag group of disciples collected money and gave it to the poor. Our story for today tells us that. Even though Judas often stole from the common purse, the use for this money was clear. It was for those in need. Because poverty was everywhere in first century Palestine, The disciples were familiar with how folks struggled. In fact, many of them probably came from poverty. Jesus himself did. And obviously, poverty is all around us even today. In the most recent census in 2020, 37.2 million Americans live in poverty. That's 11.4%. That's a lot, and that number has grown. And friends, it is our call as followers of Jesus to address it. It's our call as a church to address it. That's what it means to live like Jesus. At Trinity, we take the call of addressing poverty seriously, but there is always more we can do. Remember that bin that was out in the gathering space? There it is. It's filled with Pastor Liz, but let's fill it with food. 
so our friends at the Ecumenical Food Pantry can feed those in need. Our partner, New Hope Ministries, is working to address poverty through job and skills training here in Central PA. In August, Trinity will be raising money for world hunger to address immediate hunger needs, but also the root causes of poverty and hunger around the world. Our friends at Christian Churches United run the Help Desk. We just heard a little bit about another program they do. But the Help Desk is a social service addressing homeless, homelessness and poverty in the Tri-County area. And Tree for Hope in Guatemala is giving girls the education they need to be successful. So the question for you is, how could you be a part of addressing poverty here at Trinity? Those were just a few of our partners we help, but there's a role for all of us. And I'd love to get you connected with one of them. I know addressing poverty is no small task. It's easy for us to feel overwhelmed. It's easy, us, easy for us to feel apathetic. In fact, this verse from John 12 has been used to justify apathy toward those in need. But I believe that ending poverty is possible, friends. It is our clear call from Jesus, and in some way, we can affect change. What small part can you play in fighting poverty? How can you live like Jesus and follow his call? Oftentimes in Lent, we end our services with this dismissal. Go in peace, remember the poor. Why? Because remembering the poor is how we can also remember Jesus. That's what Jesus is trying to tell the disciples as Mary anointed his feet and wiped them with her hair. So no, it wasn't Jesus who was being selfish. He was making sure that his disciples wouldn't be. So to live like Jesus means this. Remember the poor, and you remember Jesus. Amen.